let's proceed. So here are some fun slides. Um, and um, so this is what you can do with your college education. Okay, so what this slide is showing you is the following. Here is an electric eel. And the issue is the following. So with this electric eel, oops. So here is the electric eel. And okay, so this is all underwater. And here's a fish. Okay. And this electric eel will send a current through the water. And uh, the current goes to the fish and the fish dies. And the electric eel doesn't. So the question is, how does this do it? How does the eel do it? It kills the fish without killing itself. Do you guys understand the problem? So now here's a mystery and uh, here are the numbers. So, so the numbers are, uh, uh, so this electric eel acts like a 740 volt, 750 volt battery with an internal resistance of, uh, let's say 10 ohms. So this is like a 750 volt battery. And the resistance of this uh, fish and the surrounding seawater is roughly 800 ohms or so 1000 ohms. So what the electric eagle is send, doing is sending a one amp current through the fish and the fish died. And again, the mystery is the eel did, did not die. Okay, so here is the punchline, here is the answer. So here is the fish, the current went through the fish and the fish died, one amp went through the fish. And when it comes back here, <coughs> what happens is in the electric eel, you have a row of, of parallel connections. These, there's a, we'll come to the details here, but there's 140 of these rows. 140 of these rows. So this one amp current gets divided equally 100 times, we'll say. So 100th of an amp. So 100th of an amp is flowing through each part of the eel, and that doesn't kill it. Okay, so that's how it solves the problem. All right, so this is, a, the eel is a fascinating thing. So now, um, <laughs> Here's a fact, so in most of your cells, in all of your cells, there's a potential difference between the inside and the outside, the, uh, the outside, uh, the outside is at a positive potential and the potential difference is 70 millivolts, yep. Yeah. So in the eel, these cells get specialized and uh, the potential difference for this, these cells is 150 millivolts, okay? So each of these cells, the batteries of an electric eel are called electroplaques, so they're a specialized cell, and the voltage across those uh, cells are uh, 150 millivolts. Uh, electroplaques each with an EMF of 150 volts, or maybe uh, the electroplaques could be a combination of cell, uh, cells. Anyway, uh, you'd have to, Look that up. Okay, so each of those have a 150 millivolts and an internal resistance of 0.25 ohms. So what the eel does is uh, it has 140 rows of those. Each row has 5,000 electroplaques. So each row has 5,000 of these batteries connected in series. 5,000 times that is 750 volts. So that's 750 volts, that's 750 volts, and 750 volts. And those batteries, so those are connected in series, and these are all connected in parallel, okay? So this sends out a current, this sends out a current, this sends out a current, and so this sends out one, so each of those guys send out a current to, uh, 0.93 amps divided by 140, okay? So that's what each arm sends out. And that's the current that the eel itself has to suffer. That's the current the eel has to suffer. But 140 of those added, 
will kill the fish and then it has a has dinner or lunch or whatever it is okay all right so anyway so the eel is a fascinating thing okay so current in each of the electro pack plaque itself is 1 40th of that which is uh, 6 milliamps 6.6 .6 milliamps and uh, the yield can survive that pretty easily okay <clears throat> so enough of eels I want to eat sushi now okay so um, here's a three-way lamp uh, you guys might have used these so um, when you close this switch, this filament lights up, and that's a 75 watts filament. And then on the next setting, you'll open this and close this switch, and this 100 watt filament lights up. And then on the next round, you will close both of these, and this bulb will light up as a 175 watt bulb. So depending on the position of the switches, this can light up as a 75 watt, 100 watt, or 175 watt bulb. Okay, so that's how this thing works. Okay, so most of uh, most of uh, our devices uh, nowadays, uh, at least uh, devices that use large currents have three prong plugs to them. And the three prong, prong plugs uh, are the following. Uh, there is, the third prong is a ground wire. So let's say you have a device and um, it's mal malfunctioning, meaning um, it's shorting. So this uh, one of the wires inside is touching the housing of the thing. And you don't want to get a shock, obviously. So, how do you how do we make you safe? So, if by accident this device short, what they do is they connect the house. So, if it was not a three prong plug, the, if uh, this happened, the current would flow through you, and uh, that can be fatal. So, but in a device with three prongs, uh, the housing is connected to ground. And uh, that is a much lower resistance than your body, and the current will flow through the least resistance path, and that's the ground. Okay. So this device, even if it malfunctions, will not give you a shock. Okay. So that's the idea of the three-prong plug. Here's how. Um, here's how household wiring are done. Um, household, house, household wiring is uh, done like this. So this is live wires. Here's the live wire coming from uh, the electric company. Here's the ground wire. And each device is connected in parallel. Okay. Uh, so here's another ground wire. Okay. So here are multiple devices. And everything is connected in parallel because if something malfunctions, the other devices can still operate. Okay, so here's a simplified drawing. So for instance, this goes bad, this thing can still work and so on. Okay, so every device can still work. And this is how houses are connected as well. If this house burns down or whatever uh, happened, this house will still have power. Okay, so um devices are connected in parallel in a household and each house is connected in parallel to the to to the electric company okay <clears throat> now uh, some heavy duty appliances uh, so stove top ranges and dryers and stuff they operate on 250 volts, so you're actually getting two live wires from from the electric company, and they're out of phase by 180 degrees. Okay, so what that means is um, 
So you're getting an AC voltage. You'll see this. Here's one uh, AC voltage. And the other voltage is 180 degree out of phase. Okay. And so if you connect these two together, what you would get is uh, this is the 120 volts and this is 120. So between these two guys, you get 240 volts. So, um, so if you want to just uh, use 120 volts, you use this and a ground wire. And if you want 240 volts, you use these two live wires. Okay. And the third one is the ground. Okay, well, no, okay. So if you want 120 volts, you just use this one wire and uh, you get the return voltage. And uh, if you want 240 volts, you use these two wires. Okay. All right. Uh, here's how a circuit breaker operates. So right now, well, um, so this is sort of a, this is a, these are there, you have electrical contact now. And so circuit breakers, you can use them in place of fuses. Um, when current through the bimetallic strip exceeds a limit. So, so here's a bimetallic strip. And the way the bimetallic strip works is it, like the name says, it's made of two different metals. And when you heat these things, they have different expansion properties, okay? So this one, if you heat this thing, let's say the temperature rises by five degrees Celsius, this thing will expand more than this. When this thing expands more than that, this will bend like that. This strip will bend like this. And when it bends like this, it slips into the groove. And when it slips into the groove, this contact is broken. And this electrical contact is broken. So that's how the circuit breaker works. All right, uh, I'm going to pause now.